Well, some pretty juicy secret grand jury testimony. The Michael Jackson child molestation case shows up on a website. The documents state that some of the singer's aides back his accuser's story. Now some people think that Jackson's defense team may actually be responsible for getting that information out. Joining us now is live criminal defense attorney uh, John Patrick Dolan and former prosecutor Ann Bremer. Good to have uh, both of you with us. Mr. Dolan, let me get started with you. Uh, what do you think? Is it possible that the defense team leaked this on their own? Anything's possible, but I think it's highly improbable. There's testimony with no defense lawyer present, with no cross-examination, that does nothing to benefit the defense. I think it's more likely a source from the prosecution has leaked this information because it conditions the jury before they even start uh, listening to the case. Some have said, though, that, uh, that this is a, an old tactic of Joe Jackson's to kind of get it all out there because it sort of lowers the, the, the shock factor. And what do you think? That's exactly right, and that's what's been said down in Santa Maria. And, you know, one of the lead parts of the, the leak right now is, is the statement that there are no eyewitnesses. There is no witness that would corroborate, corroborate what the child has to say except for his brother, and that's kind of been the lead on the websites. So, uh, and, and think about this. Michael Jackson had a chance to go out and twice give his own statement in response to quote-unquote leaks from the prosecution, and that's been very advantageous for him right now. John, what do you think, you know, now so many of us have had a chance to kind of go through this grand jury testimony, and it does say that nobody specifically saw him act inappropriately, but there's a lot of uh, potentially damning stuff on there about how he did give kids alcohol, how some of the security guards saw uh, one child, the accuser, I believe, walking around drunk and trying to get on a golf cart. H how's all this going to affect this trial? Well, that's exactly why it's highly unlikely that the defense had anything to do with the release. But it's going to come out sooner or later anyway, right? Well, it is, but the way things come out in court as evidence is dramatically different than grand jury testimony. Almost uh, none of a grand jury transcript will come out unless it's direct testimony. So it doesn't help the defense at all. I have a feeling that someone in the prosecution has been providing these leaks because it's been happening ever since the beginning of the case. And I have to tell you, the, the Michael Jackson defense team has been scrupulous about maintaining the gag order, and that hasn't been the case for other witnesses and other people that are linked to the prosecution. John, have you had a chance to ask any of that team directly if they had anything to do with this? Uh, I couldn't uh, answer that question without uh, violating a confidence, but let me say I'm confident the defense had nothing to do with this leak. All right. And, uh, you know, when you go through this testimony, what do you think about what's in there? What's the most damning evidence that you see? And then I'm going to ask you, John, what you think is most exonerating in there. Well, I think, you know, the, the most damning thing in this case is evidence. We don't know whether it will come in yet or not, is, which is seven other victims, which is now with this new victim, is this the eighth verse, same as the first, in terms of looking at this case and going back to 93, you've got people that worked for him, people that were loyal to him, that corroborate what was occurring and the cover up after the fact, not letting the family leave the ranch, etc. You've got all kinds of evidence of surveillance of this boy at his school and of his family that was found. You've got the whole corroboration about the Jesus juice, you know, the drinking uh, right. wine out of a pop can. I mean, it, it's endless in terms of what, how powerful it is for the prosecution. And, and, and this is a case with fingerprints on pornography, an eyewitness and the boy's brother, and of course, you know, 46-year-olds okay. don't have sleepovers. All right, that's, that's plenty, of, uh, plenty of potentially damning stuff. I mean, John, go on, but... John, you know, when you put all that together, do you just have a very eccentric individual, which the world already pretty much knows, or do you have actual evidence in this specific case with this boy of molestation? Well, good question. There is no actual evidence. There is no forensic evidence. There is no eyewitness testimony. When you look at competent evidence that's introduced in court versus innuendo and speculation in the media, you will see this case fall apart. You will see Michael Jackson be found not guilty. All right, we'll see. And we're going to see a lot uh, between now and then, I'm sure. John Patrick Dolan, and Bremer, good to talk Thanks. to you. Thanks. Well, do you remember the Scott Peters?